So just to go through the, the challenges, Dan, um, not dealing with new functionality and uh, bugs and so forth, but what are our, our big and challenges right now? Uh, performance is still, an, I think, an area. Um, you always, I, I think, performance is always a struggle with development frameworks just because they, they build that abstraction. And uh, we've made a lot of good progress, but there's still some work to do. I'll talk more about that. Uh, developer productivity, uh, stability of upgrades, progression issues, and technical debt. So these are the four things that I want to talk about uh, moving forward and, and what we could do with these. So moving forward then uh, with performance first. Um, well, looking back real quick, we, we made a lot of good progress in 2.4. Um, the big memory issue that we have should be resolved. Um, if you are worried about using the store in the form and session, um, you know, I, I don't think that's a concern anymore. The view is not on there. It's, it's very, very small overhead. It really shouldn't add up. And uh, you still have control uh, in terms of how your data persists on the form and so forth. So those memory issues, I, I feel confident, and I think we got some good verification from the quality student load tests on the memory issues um, that, that that problem has been resolved for now. We've made a lot of good improvements with response times. Um, that's one of those things that's hard to globally say across everything. <laughs> you know, uh, you really have to take it on a case-by-case -case basis. But um, we have made a lot of good improvements there over 2.4. And uh, we made some improvements with the DOM as well. Um, there's more to do, but we made some really good improvements there. So 2.4 really was like the performance release uh, where we focus very, very heavily on that. But moving forward, um, one of the things that our QA team, uh, I hope, is going to focus on is um, the monitoring of changes. Um, you know, we, we get caught up in this. We tune, and then new functionality comes in and, you know, introduces a new bottleneck and so forth. And so we're constantly having to retune and so forth. So we really we want to get on top of that and be able to monitor changes just like you'd want to with regression, regression failures. You know, as soon as they happen, try to get those so you're not slipping down, you know, past a particular benchmark. Um, extending performance load tests, this kind of ties in with the, the regression issues and the things we're getting started with quite a student. Larry's kind of leading so we can, you know, start including performance load tests from applications in our feedback loop that we're getting to make sure that we're where we should be. And um, in two, hope, probably two six, we're going to introduce EH cache. Um, so that's another level on that uh, session usage. Uh, you'll be able to choose not to use session at all, actually store it off on disk, or you have some strategy in the middle. EH cache is very flexible in how it's configured. And also throw this guy on a lot of our services, which give us a lot of boost. Uh, so it's not redoing those lookups to spring um, and the beans that can be a little bit costly. So I think that's something, uh, you know, that will give us uh, some boost there. There's lots of little things as well, but these are the kind of the major things, I think, to focus on uh, for performance over the next couple of releases in RICE. Any other comments on that? So developer productivity, um, I, I think this is, you can't contribute one thing to this. Uh, it's many things that contribute to this, but I'm going to focus on just a couple of things. Um, one is, is tooling of how you build, how you build out the, the uh, UIs in KRAD. So um, some things we already have in place in 2.5. One is a custom schema. So we've been working on this for quite a while, um, and it's now in 2.5. So essentially what it does, it's still built with Spring, but uh, instead of all the being and the property tags, um, your tag name, so the actual component name, it looks more just like HTML. Uh, I'm going to show you an example. Uh, with that, we're going to have image support. 
So if you're a keyboard guy and, uh, and you want to use Emmet, you'll be able to really whip out those tags and those components fast. Um, cool thing about Emmet, uh, you know, we've always had an IDE, it's right, macros or whatever, but Emmet, you can have the same definition and they go across different IDEs and if you want to use Sublime Text or anything like that. So we have a definition there. Um, so that's pretty cool. I have a new thing called Mock View. It's in 2.5, and uh, if you just want to prototype a screen, you don't want to have to build a controller or a form or have any data or anything. You can use the mock view, and so you just code the XML and build up your screen without any back-end things there, and it, and it mocks out the data and the controller calls and so forth. Is that all runtime? Yes. Uh-huh. Yeah, it's all runtime. It, it has a controller and f form that uses the default hooks things up to. Yeah. Um, Quality Studio, uh, no, not Quality, KC is interested in using this. They have an offshore team that's not very productive, and they want to find something for them to do. <laughs> and so they're thinking about having this do this mock view where they can send the designs to them first, and they can try to mock it up, and then send back to the core team to hook it up to the back end. So you might find some uses for this. Uh, and it's kind of building up to a more general thing which has been one of the problems with KRAT2, and that's how do designers work with the, the, the framework. Um, you know, right now it's because of its dependencies on Tomcat and the database and various things like that. You have to go through all that kind of setup and write setup and so <coughs> forth. So uh, this is not there yet. Oh, sorry. This is not there yet, but we have been doing some work on that to create some so sort of a designer environment where designers can just – one click, start start up uh, an application, probably be like a you know web server and embedded database or so forth, and using things like the mock view and the reloading dictionary, build out the, the pages using KRAT components. Uh, it's not exactly clear. It might have some ties with something else I'm going to talk about now, and this is this cross-project web, web cross-project thing. But the first three are in place right now. The last one we've been working to think some progress on. I want to show you just uh, a little bit of this. Um, yes, I think that's right. You know, Brian, I think I'm right. <laughs> it's either August or September. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is a... Um, oh, thanks. This is a, a picture of a custom schema. So hopefully you can just tell at a glance how it's different than the screen beans. So instead of having to say bean parent equals UIF form view, uh, P header text equals our property name equals and all this, all right, I just use the components, the tag name. This is our mock view. Or this, this could be form view. This could be lookup view, whatever. You can set any of the simple properties as attributes, or you can use them, set them uh, nested using the property name as the, the tag name. So I have a mock view. Here I'm setting the help on that. Then I have a single page. The items in that page, I have a vertical box, excuse me, a vertical section. I'm including some components. components. I'll talk about this in a bit. Footer, okay. You can still use the spring stuff behind with, with this. Um, so you can still use the spring property tag, the ref tag, and all that stuff. Um, so if there's not a tag for your component, you can still fall back to spring. Um, I don't have time you know, to go through all of it today, but um, it is pretty flexible, too, in that the schema and everything is built out from annotations on the Java class. Um, so it's it's pretty easy for you to add your own uh, components with tag names or create tag names for your extensions of our components. Um, we do have a conversion script as well. When you start, when you're ready to use this, you can run the conversion script and convert all your Spring UIF files you currently have to this new format. So there's no should be any conversion there. So hopefully you kind of get a sense. Um, it's a lot less verbose. Um, it's a lot easier to read. Okay, here's a table. 
um, subcollection, stack subcollection, so forth. Uh, here's an input input field, property name, label. Everybody get the pictures, worked with it before, you can kind of see how it works. Anybody have any questions on that? So that's kind of what it looks like. Is this, I mean, will the old screens still work? Oh yeah, yeah. So we don't. So we we could potentially upgrade it to two six. Yes, yes. And not do anything. Right. Yeah, you don't have to do anything. Yeah, you could put actually your opening definitions directly in this. You can mix mix them, and it's still all spring. So.